Got you. Uh, welcome to the spookiest time of the year. Tax season. I don't know if it's tax season. I don't pay those. It's October and usually I like to do like a series of videos that comes out that's sort of related to the spooky month or just kind of videos that I've been meaning to make and just make them in succession. I was gonna try to do 13, but um, I have two jobs and a life. So I'm only gonna try to do seven. Why seven? Because seven, eight, nine. And it just works with my schedule. So this is the first one. And we're talking about the, t t t uh, we're, we're talking about TV shows. I love TV shows, especially if there's cooking. And guess what? There are two spooky episodes and we're going to talk about them today. So let's get right into it. The first one I want to talk about is Bar Rescue. I'm a big fan of Bar Rescue. Again, it's very simple. A guy comes in who knows how to make a bar work, all the, and then and then he's like, hey, you all are drunk, and you should be paying better attention to your bar. And then all of them are either like, screw you, man, get out of here, or, oh, business. And that's the show, and it's wildly entertaining. And this is an episode called, John Ain't Afraid of No Ghosts. So let's get into it. Paul, we make cherry bombs. The, the someone turn off the lights! Ah! Oh my getting pushed over. Water coming on and off. Paper fly across the room. Oh my god! Someone blew on some napkins! Why can't this owner stay in the bar? Ghosts! Shut up! Not because he has an insurmountable amount of pressure on him because he has to make up the loss that he comes from his family because they paid for this bar that he clearly doesn't know how to run because he's a terrible boss, but because of ghosts! Can't do it! I can't do it! I can't do it! I don't care! It's starting to become frightening to the point... And I, I believe it. He's genuinely scared. Okay, you should not be calling John Taffer. You should be calling a Ghostbuster. I guess I should say now, I don't believe in ghosts. Sorry, I know I seem like somebody that would. I mean, I love cryptids and ghosts and all those like spooky stories. It's a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, I don't believe in them. And there's no way to prove ghosts or anything like that. As much as people believe, none of it feels like surmountable and evidence. And it feels weird to defend the idea that I don't believe in spirits or ghosts or anything like that. I'm very comfortable with the idea that ghosts aren't real. And, um... They're not in this bar. And there's so many different types of things where, and when it comes to ghosts and that sort of subculture that is just so stupid. Like... Orbs. Up here. Orbs. I bought Orbs? That's dust! Your camera's not focused. It's a dark environment. That's dust! I bought instruments to let the ghost speak to us and we've talked to the ghost. As you're here right now, can you make something turn on, turn off, and fall over? Okay, I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna go for real. Ghost boxes are just as stupid as orbs. I hate those things. How much does a ghost box cost? Hold on. Ghost box buy. Spirit boxes. Oh. A hundred. Oh my god. For a broken radio. Get off of it, man. Don't waste my time with your stupidity. For sure. And now that we've kind of talked about the bar a little bit, it's time to call in the big guns. Who are you gonna call? John Tap. Because a hungry dog is an obedient dog. Well, if we're not causing people to be hungry to work, that, then we're providing them with all the meals they need sitting at home. John, no. I still love you, Johnny. I get that you uh, misspoke. That's what we'll call it. And the next step of the process is recon, where John Taffer parks outside of the bar. He reviews it a little bit. He sends in some secret agents to figure out some of the more hands-on problems. And you got the typical problems. This happens every episode. Untrained staffed. Overpouring. A bad boss that doesn't pay attention. The money's running low. The hallmarks of a bad bar that John Taffer has to save. But this one's a little bit different because they all believe that they're like golf. The person actually died on the floor. So the origin of it is somebody died at the bar. Why would you tell your customer someone died in the bar? You have the ultimate excuse. The greatest excuse of all time. Go get him, Johnny! It's not my fault. 
It's the ghost! And we get the typical bar rescue. John comes in, he destroys the bar, the confidence of the bar owner as well. My grandfather's gonna lose 300,000, not because of me, because of the ghost! I'm scared, what do you want me to do? What? You know what ghosts don't like? What? Crowds. I actually love that. I also, this doesn't really have a lot to do with the paranormal stuff in this episode, but there is a waitress in this bar that's apparently still there that is, she just, she's crazy. I just don't think that's real. I don't think that's reality. You just, I just poured it. Like, why does she keep questioning her reality? Maybe she's the ghost and she's messing with the bar. But so to really just just end the ghost problems that they're so freaked out about, they go get a scam artist and, sorry, they go get a medium. Amanda and Chris. And then they, and then she busts the, busts on ghosts. He is now gone. How do you feel right now? Wow, the ghost is gone. Glad we paid $5,000 for that bullshit. And the bar is saved! What, an, what a thrilling paranormal investigation adventure. Now let's move on over to Gordon Ramsay's- Tonight on Hotel Hell, in a small Connecticut town, a family legacy is on the brink of disaster. And do you think this is what your father wanted? Absolutely not. This show is called Hotel Hell. Hotel Hell is basically kitchen nightmares, except for hotels, if you couldn't hell. But I'm tis ha, ha What's this thumbnail? Is that the, is that the ghost? Is she the ghost? I mean, all these like hospitality business shows all kind of have the same structure. You get the problems, the person goes in to see the problems firsthand, they insult everybody, they fix everything, Bob's your uncle. And so when it comes to this historic hotel in some random location that I'll always tell myself that I'll visit, but I never really will, they send in the king. I can't believe you're gonna be in room 16. Why? Because room 16 has a ghost in it. This woman told me who went to room 16. She said the ghost was pulling the blankets off her all night long. And you haven't been drinking sherry? No. So this historic hotel, they don't really pride themselves on being like a ghost related like spot, which I honestly really appreciate if they're just like, yeah, there's a ghost in that room, apparently. Um, is that right? My details in here, credit card details? Yes, we take a credit card number to hold the room. No, I appreciate that, but why put it in the book? That's the house, pals. <laughs> I got the credit card details for everybody. I will have to call 911. I don't really have to call 911, do I? If anyone would be a master criminal, it would be Gordon Ramsay. Also, he's stolen your bank card information. Again, we run into the same problems at every hotel that he encounters. It's just kind of a disgusting place. It's kind of poorly managed, especially the owners are, are just very bad at their job, of course. TJ's not a great leader. She yells at you. I've never heard a thank you. And can we get this woman a thank you? I mean, guys, come on. I am very proud of my food. Whenever I eat other places, I think we're better than 90% of them. If you're an overconfident owner or chef, you are screwed. I think one of my favorite parts of every Gordon Ramsay show is when he comes in and he talks to like the, the waitress that works there and she is like just his audience to any material he's trying out. That's limper than my granddad's dick. But let's get rid of that nonsense. Let's get to the spooky stuff that we're here for. <gasps> Gordon Ramsay's room. And what is this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I am locked in. She tucks them into the bed. I might even crawl next to them. What? At least they've got one regular guy. So the ghost is sleeping with Gordon. Very interesting. Brings a whole new meaning to ghost bust ass. You know, a thank you would be nice every once in a while. And can we please give this woman a thank you? Gordon does what he does. He insults, he fixes, he insults, he fixes, he's the king. In this particular episode, they kind of have to have the owners do these mini interventions just to kind of bring them back together again. There are no standards in the kitchen, chef. Cheyenne. That's a good thing to hear from the boss about their head chef. Can both of you come with me? Please, there's something in my room I'd like to show you. Oh? Please, both of you take a stand over there. Oh? Because in this book... What? So he did steal the credit card information. Chris, do you want to make this work? No.
Nah, I'm just kidding. Gordon Ramsay saved the day. It's all good now. We're good. And yes, they did actually include another paranormal investigation in this one. And yes, I think this one's just as fake and stupid as the other one. Camera's acting really funky. However, uh, Gordon's thinking a little bit ahead. You are officially a member of the Haunted Connecticut Tours. <laughs> and you are now officially haunted. Congratulations, my darling. Thank you. See, that's just smart. Get the bag, man. Go ahead, a French kiss. Gordon! Oh. Gordon, stop! And that's all he wrote. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, what am I supposed to say? Be on the lookout for more spooky related videos. As a matter of oh, can you even see this? There's a list of them right here. Not this. They'll be coming out real soon. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time. Ah! Alright, that's stupid out of context.